Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So hello everyone. My name is Guang Hui. I'm a fifth year PhD student at uh, CRSP. So today I'm going to present my work. Nugget. Uh, this is work uh, where uh, for which I collaborated with my advisor Benjamin Van Dermi, who is uh, unfortunately not here today for that retirement event. Um, so today's uh, today I will split the presentation into two parts. So the so first part is a paper that I we have published to SML 2023, and then another part is uh, our ongoing work, which I believe will be public soon, but uh, please do not distribute. I will start my presentation with this famous quote. I believe most of you have heard of this. Ray Mooney uh, said this uh, uh, during a workshop at ACL 2014. You cannot cram the meaning of a sentence into a single vector. The context of this quote is that a presenter is trying to cram the semantics of the whole passage into a single vector for convenience. And I and also I also believe most of you agree with Rimuni because it's unreasonable that you can cram however long sequence into a single vector. So how do we deal with that? We want to solve this problem. But before our presentation, uh, we want to I want to introduce a little bit of background. So historically, people have two ways to encode text. The first is a passage level encoding, where people are trying to uh, encode the the semantics of the passage into a single vector, however long the sequence is. Uh, a typical work of this line uh, of this line of work is expert sentence bird. Another uh, encoding strategy is token level encoding, where people try to use something like a transformer to map a sequence of vector uh, sequence of tokens into a sequence of vectors. Each vector corresponds to a single token. A uh, typical work is a cobert, which is a fine-tuned bird for the purpose of information retrieval. And our goal of Nugget is to find a balance, a dynamic balance between the capacity and the space, which means that uh, we disagree with both of them. For a token level, for a passage level encoding, we think it is uh, limited by its capacity. And uh, for token level capacity, uh, token level encoding, we believe that it's too costly. So we want to use fewer vectors to encode the whole passage. So number of vectors is fewer than number of tokens, uh, but it's not a one, it's not a single one. So here I take a very quick overview of the nuggets. So we want to encode text with a variable lengths of vectors, which are also called nuggets. So in this diagram, we have a, a passage, I think, therefore I am, so we first use a bidirectional transform encoder to encode that sequence into a sequence of vectors. Each vector corresponds to a single token. And then we would do some uh, following procedure to map them into a fewer into a, a, a fewer vectors, which we call nuggets. The number of nuggets should be fewer than the number of tokens here. And uh, with nugget being encoded, we want to decode some nugget uh, to reconstruct the input. Uh, so this uh, serves as an uh, architecture of auto encoder, and nugget is a bottleneck. So nugget can be trained or supervised. Uh, and because some modules in the nugget architecture is not differentiable, so we want to build a residual connection uh, from the nugget to the decoder to ensure the differential quality. So we can do end to end training. Uh, in this slide, uh, uh, this slide is just a quick overview. I will go through the bullets one by one. First of all, how do we generate nuggets? Instead of generating nuggets, I would say, how do we select nuggets? Why? Say that we have a sequence, I think, therefore I am, and we have a transform encoder, bidirectional encoder, encode them into some a sequence of vectors. And the key point here is that uh, the transform encoder is a contextualized encoder. So each token repetition here contains a certain amount of global information. So we want to reuse a subset of a token embeddings to represent the whole passage. Not a one, not all of them, but a subset of them. To achieve this, we propose a feed forward neural network as a score up. This score up is used to score each token embedding and generate a logic or a score. We would say it's a not logic for some reason. I will explain later. So a score is a log, uh, is a scalar. Uh, it indicates how important this token is or how much global information this token encodes. 
after this uh, uh, logic or the score, uh, we would uh, select out some tokens with high scores, uh, or equivalently, we want to filter out some tokens with lower scores. So in this scenario, we would select n times r tokens as the repetition of the whole passage. N is the n is the number of tokens in the input sequence, and the r is a compression ratio, which can be configured as a hyperparameter. This uh, the resulted uh, vectors are called nuggets, and in this example, we have two vectors as a repetition of the passage. So how do we train a nugget encoder? So I would, uh, uh, so nugget can be used to encode the passage. So therefore, they can be used to decode decode the passage. So we would stack a transformer decoder on top of the transformer encode, uh, nugget. And we use cross attention to let the decoder to attend to the nuggets tokens uh, vectors. So the whole architecture is an open encoder and can be trained unsupervised way. And equivalently, we can switch the training objective from autoencoding to machine translation by just switching output from English to another language, for example, Chinese here. But uh, I want to, you to note that uh, the nugget selection is not differentiable. As I said before, a nugget scorer will output some scalars as the uh, as an indicator of how important this token is. And these scalars will be used to select some tokens. But the selection part is hard. It's not differentiable. And uh, the logic here will never receive any grading signals. And the speed forward neural network below the logic will never be trained. So how do we ensure the differential quality? So we want to build a, so to ensure the differential quality, we build the residual connection from the logic to the decoder. So here we have a, an additional pathway where we directly input the logic into the cross attention calculation. So the equation is here. So uh, now th this is the equation of the Cross attention, so, uh, cross attention matrix, uh, where x uh, src x source is a nugget vector and x target is a uh, is a the tokens being decoded. So this equation inside the softmax parenthesis is a cross attention logic of uh, the decoder. So additionally, we input the logic into this parenthesis, uh, serve as part of the calculation of the cross attention. So we want to note that uh, the logic here, uh, we put the logic here just because we want the logic to receive some gradients because this equation is soft. It can receive gradients. Um, we, we do do this not because the logic can actually help the cross attention because we believe that cross attention has done its job with the features of the negative vectors. So with this framework, we now have a, so logics are used in two different different places. The first is used to select some tokens. And the next is to help assist the decoder across attention. But this equation looks crazy um, because we simply put that logic into a random parenthesis and we call it end-to-end -end training. So how does it work? Why does it work if it works? So how does it work? Let's take a closer look of the gradient that the logic can actually receive. So we found that with some simple deductions, we found that the gradient on the nugget logic is proportional to the gradient on the cross attention logic. The semantics of this equation is that if the decoder pays more attention to a nugget vector, it then will assign a positive gradient signal to that nugget logic. So in the next round of training, the nugget will be more, uh, they have a, have a higher chance, the nugget token will have a higher chance to be selected. So this is a positive feedback. If you select something that is useful, that is globally useful, it will be promoted and selected more. Um, so some people ask me about why does it work? Because uh, from this equation, we can see that uh, uh, all these tokens that are selected as nugget will receive gradient. The tokens uh, 
the non-market tokens will never receive any gradient. So how does it work? So I would use a metaphor of a weapon mode to show how the method works, the training works. Uh, so initially, all the tokens have an equal chance to be selected as nuggets. So it's a pretty much a very, it's pretty much random. Um, but uh, some tokens are useful, some tokens are less useful. The useful tokens will be promoted and will be, and then the less useful tokens will be pushed down. Like you, you hack a working mode game. So uh, as time goes on, the selection will be more and more stable. The useful tokens will always be selected and so the not useful tokens will never be selected. Actually, after several epochs of training, the selector is already, uh, can, 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 can convert very quickly. So in the following slide, I will show the experiments we have did, uh, we have done on the nugget. So we want to show true perspective of a nugget. First, the nugget itself is very interesting and also it is very useful. So the experiment setup we have is uh, we we use the architecture of a BART, which is an encoder decoder transformer. We did not train BART from scratch, but instead we train BART from a check we fine tune a checkpoint, which is MBART 50. MBART 50 is a many-to-many -many machine translation model. And the data set we use is WMP19, Chinese and English part. Uh, we, because WMP19 is very short, so we try to concatenate the sentences to form documents up to 128 tokens. The training objective is also encoding, where we use uh, English for both input and output, or machine translation, where we use uh, English as input and Chinese as output. We first want to answer three questions about the intrinsic uh, uh, properties of a nugget. So what tokens are selected nuggets because they are originally some tokens? And uh, what is uh, what is the sufficient compression ratio for nugget? Because we want to feel we want to use uh, uh, some tokens as uh, vectors uh, as nuggets, uh, but uh, and we do not want to use too many. But what is too many and uh, what uh, what is sufficient? And the last question is, what is encoded in each nugget, actually? I want you to take a guess. So what tokens are most important to a transformer? Consider you are a transformer. Uh, if you are forced to only use 10% tokens to represent the whole passage, and uh, equivalently, if you want to reconstruct the input, but only, only look into 10% tokens, what will you use? So before the nugget work, I was also confused about this question. I thought there would be some verbs because, uh, uh, because of the my experience with uh, 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 dependency parse tree. But actually, the answer is uh, the jump word. So in this diagram, we show a piece of text uh, where the lighter text, uh, the, the text with darker colors have higher logics. And the tokens in green background are selected as nuggets. So instead of using the negative word, junk words, uh, we have a professional word for that, which is closer text delimiters. Uh, so if you look into those tokens, you can find there are some text delimiters. For example, the punctuations, the commas, uh, the periods, and uh, the conjunction words, and and or, uh, which is not shown in the example. To take a closer look, uh, so we plot this uh, token frequency of nugget uh, tokens. So we can see the most frequent tokens are comma, period, uh, the S, and, and of. They are some not meaningful words. Uh, they are selected not because they are frequent. For example, the uh, for example, article word D is really selected, although it's very frequent in text. So why does a nugget behave so? This is a very interesting question. We do not have an answer yet, but we have two speculations. The first speculation is that uh, those tokens, they are semantically light. They are very lightweight. They do not carry a lot of semantics. So they have tons of space to carry some background knowledge or not background, some context information. So they are used as nuggets. Another speculation is that uh, is because of the pre-training objective of the transformer language model. Remember, the pre-training objective is to predict the next token. So to predict a test delimiter, 
you need to understand, a language model needs to understand if the text has ended. So the prediction of a, a delimiter is equivalent to a classifier to classify if the preceding text uh, has an EOS token uh, being followed. <laughs> so they are they contain some global information. In this slide, I will show uh, what is the sufficient ratio for nugget. I said that we want to use fewer vectors to represent the passage, but what is uh, too few and what is too many? Uh, so in this slide, I show the blue score of the input and output. Uh, no, not input and output. Blue score of the autoencoding and the machine translation. For the autoencoding, the blue score is calculated uh, of the uh, of the input and the output. For the machine translation, is calculated with the output and the gold translation. So surprisingly, we found that uh, the performance is saturated after ten percent tokens selected nuggets. Uh, which means 10% is already a very sufficient uh, uh, compression ratio. And another behavior behavior we found is that uh, after 10% tokens selected as nuggets, actually the autoencoding is almost of a bird team, which means that it perfectly reconstructs the input without, without any word error. Its uh, blue score is uh, close to 100%, which means that it's almost lossless encoding. With those good properties, we want to invest, investigate the most uh, uh, difficult question. What is encoded in each nugget, actually? So we answer this question by measure the confidence of the decoder on each target token. So uh, consider we have a decoder-only language model. So the decoder without any cross attention is a language model itself. So it takes the past token as the input and predicts the next token. Let's say in the example, we have a, I think, therefore I am as a context, and we want to predict the token M. Here we isolate nuggets, which means the global information is not used by the decoder. And additionally, we want to make unconditional language model a conditional language model by plug in the nugget encoding, VJ, the J nugget. So we want to know uh, the confidence of this model on the next token if an additional nugget is provided. And we want to calculate the difference between those uh, two equations, the unconditional and the conditional uh, probability. We call this a probability game, which basically analyzes the correlation between the nugget token, uh, nugget vector Vj and the target token Yi, the correlation between I and J. Or in other words, how much contribution is this nugget for the this target token? So in this diagram, we have a, this uh, we have this plot. So the x-axis here is a token index. We have a 128 tokens, and uh, we have two curves. The blue curve is a uh, the red curve is the location of the nuggets, which is uh, where the nuggets are selected. And the blue curve is the location of the encoded text, the probability gain uh, on, uh, different, on, on the target tokens at different places. So we found that two curves, uh, they are very interesting. The blue curve is a slightly behind the red curve, which means each nugget is roughly encoding something before that nugget token. And this gap is around 10 tokens. This is exactly the inverse of the compression ratio we use in this experiment, 10%. So we conclude that nugget is encoding is a preceding text. Let's take a quick over summary of the intrinsic evaluation. So what tokens are selected nuggets? They are text closer delimiters. What is sufficient the compression ratio are? Um, five to 10%. Uh, what is encoded in each nugget is a roughly is a preceding text. So with all those evidence collected, we can conclude that uh, nugget is learning a divide and conquer solution where it try to split text with the limiters and try to summarize each segment of text with its ending tokens. And this whole procedure is learned unsupervisedly without any guidance. So we then want to show what is a nugget useful. 
why is not useful? What are they good for? So we show this uh, with two experiments. The first is one not is used alone. It can be measured, it can be used to measure the similarity between documents. And if a nugget is used as an auxiliary module, it can compress the context and provide some global information for the downstream task. So we first present uh, we first present an experiment uh, on document similarity test, where we try to uh, we try to um, use nugget to to measure a pair of a similarity of a pair of a text. So the existing data sets for text similarity measure are too short. They are mostly short sequences. So instead, we propose two synthetic data sets with up to 256 uh, uh, tokens per document. So we propose two sub data sets. The first is a paraphrase identification, which is built on Parabank and a passenger ranking built on the wiki text. So the task is that uh, given a source document uh, to rerank the 20, 20 candidates based on their similarity to the source document. So before going to the results, uh, uh, I want to introduce the measure we use to calculate the similarity before between two documents. Uh, the equation is here. Uh, suppose we have a query and a document, say that we have I think and therefore I am, therefore I think so I am. We compress them into nuggets. And in this scenario, we have a two nuggets for the first and a two nuggets for the second, but they can have different numbers. Then we take a cosine similarity pairwise and take the max operator uh, over the document side. And then we take a mean operator over the query side. So we end up with a scalar MQD. So the scalar MQD is a, a Scalar MQD ranges from minus one to one, just as the cosine similarity does. Here is a result where we have two baselines. The first baseline is passage level encoding, where we encode the document into a single vector. And the second is token level encoding, where we have a token wise uh, embeddings. And we try a different uh, compression ratios. So we found that as more and more to as a, as a nugget number increases, the performance increases as well. And it can outperform the baseline passive level and sometimes can even outperform the token level embedding. And, uh, and the performance on the uh, passenger ranking data set is similar, is consistent with the performance of the uh, uh, passage, uh, passage uh, paraphrase identification. So Nugget can efficiently encode the context, and those encodings can also help the downstream tasks. So in this scenario, we want to show this with a simple experiment, language modeling. So the transformers suffer from quadratic complexity, but what if we can compress the length of the history tokens into fewer vectors? So to answer this question, we want to, uh, so we want to plug in the Nugget into the uh, decoder-only language model. So consider that we have a text that is split into segments, the so past segments and the current segment, and the sequence model is used to decode the second current segment. Instead of attending to the past segment, we use a nugget encoder to encode them into nuggets, and the sequence model only attends to those nuggets. So for experiments, we use 128 tokens for each segment of text. And uh, the, we use H to indicate the number of past segments. So we use perplexity as a measure of the language uh, as a measure for the uh, performance of language model. So you can you can see that with more and more segments encoded as straight, the performance is improved, and uh, the nugget uh, uh, model is uh, can outperform the baseline of a passage level encoding where each sentence, each document is encoded into a single vector. And there's a, uh, another baseline where no history tokens are provided. So in the remainder of this uh, presentation, I want to show some ongoing work that uh, I have done during my internship at the Microsoft Research. Uh, I think this will be public soon, but uh, uh, please do not distribute it yet. So this work, we call it two-dimensional nugget, where we try to 
apply Nagi to a decoder-only language model without any encoder. So let's take a, a quick comparison between the encoder-decoder transformer and the decoder-only transformer. So the difference between encoder and decoder transformer and the decoder-only is uh, how they encode the text. Uh, for a bidirectional encoder of uh, the, so a typical encoder-decoder language model is like a BART and a T5, and typical decoder-only is something that is more popular now, like uh, the LAMA or GPT. So it's the difference between them is that the decoder only model will use a stack of vectors to represent a token because uh, the, you know, the future tokens will attend to every layer replication of the past tokens instead of just the last layer. So, uh, so we have more vectors uh, and each uh, the token replication is getting thicker. How do we deal with that? So, we make nugget thicker as well. So we want to encode text with a language decoder. This is the first step as we did for encoder-decoder transformer. So we get this uh, reputation layer by layer for each token. <laughs> and then we use a scorer that, uh, that can select the nuggets, uh, similar to what we have done for the encoder, uh, encoder nuggets. The so token reputation are used as the input to the scorer and the scalar score is the output. And in the next step, those tokens selected as nuggets will be used as a repetition of the whole passage, where other token repetitions will be discarded. The future tokens only attend to the nuggets instead of the whole passage. But there is a huge bug about this diagram. Why? Consider that we have some additional tokens. For example, we have a set by uh, what if the last tokens are not nuggets? They are not selected. And because this is a decoder only model, which each token only encodes something before that token. So the semantics of the last two tokens will never be encoded. This is a huge bug because they are missing. So how do we deal with that? We propose a hybrid encoding strategy where we only nullify the distant tokens. We compress them if they are far from us and uh, a nugget has already encoded its semantics. And we want to keep the recent tokens as tokens. Similar to the encoder transformer, we want to build a residual connection for the nugget selection. Uh, but the formula is a little bit different. So remember, a score calculates a score for nugget selection but the calculation part is not differentiable. So the solution is that we build a residual connection uh, between the self-attention and the gradient uh, and the nugget logic. So for this equation, it's attention weight from the token i to token j, where i is larger than j. And uh, um, fortunately, token j is selected as nugget. So the nugget score for the token j will be plugged in into this equation it participates in the calculation of the socket max. And in this way, similar to the encoder transfer uh, nugget, we make nugget selection part differentiable. So for experiments, we adopt this architecture of a LAMA 7B, and we fine tune a LAMA with a LoRa. So we use a two-dimensional nugget as an autoencoder for the first experiment. Uh, where we fine tune a lemma on the data set of a pile. And we also do some downstream experiments where we have evidence based question answering, where we fine tune a lemma 2 model on Eli 5. First of all, this is a proof of concept of encoding. This is not part of the, this is not ultimate goal of this project, but uh, it can show that Nugget can efficiently encode the text. So we encode text into Nuggets. And then reconstruct the input from those nuggets, as we did for the encoder only. Uh, and we take a baseline, which is uh, ICAE in context of encoding, a paper published recently. They also work with Llama and uh, on the same data set, comparable. Uh, the strategy of this paper is that they compress the text into 128 memory tokens, uh, um, but it, it ignores the length of input. So however long input you have, you always have 128 tokens and they are appended to that uh, input sequence. 
So we want to show that Nugget is actually an efficient autoencoder. So in this diagram, we show the results of a uh, result of the autoencoding. So the, uh, we have five groups of uh, uh, box plots from left to right. There are 100 tokens to 500 tokens of the input sequence. And uh, each, uh, each, uh, each group of bars have three columns, the ICAE baseline, the nugget, and uh, with different ratios from five to 10% of tokens. So we want to indicate that the number of nugget tokens is much, much fewer than the baseline. For example, for the five percent, uh, for a hundred tokens, the nugget is uh, we only need five or ten nuggets, uh, but the ICAE paper needs one twenty eight tokens. Uh, for the even for the five hundred sequence length, uh, the nugget ratio is uh, still around twenty to forty percent. However, nugget can achieve comparable or for long sequences much better performance. They better memorize the input sequence and reconstruct them. And I mean, because ICA is a constant length, so uh, then when the sequence length grows, uh, it might fail. And for shorter sequences, uh, it's a very inefficient. I mean, for this experiment, I don't know the purpose of this experiment because you have a 128 tokens uh, to compare uh, 100 tokens. This is not something you should uh, uh, brag with, right? <laughs> and the Lama model, like BART prefers the punctuations and it's even stronger. Uh, in this uh, example, so I, I randomly stack the text segment. Uh, the punctuations uh, uh, and the commas, are the, like the commas and the periods are selected as nuggets as uh, we observe in the BART model. We have a downstream task, which is a question answering with uh, supporting documents. A uh, data set, we, uh, so we basically want to answer one research question. So can Nugget actually help the language model to decode efficiently with a reasonable trade-off of the performance? We take the data set of Eli5, uh, which is an open domain QA data set. So the question is uh, something like this, a very open domain. And the answer can be relatively long. It's uh, around 140 tokens. And we additionally retrieve some documents as supporting, uh, as supporting evidence. So we use a retrieval system and we retrieve some from Wikipedia. Each document or each passage contains around 128 tokens. So Eli 5 experiment set up is like this. So we first take five documents as evidence and we independently encode them into nuggets. <clears throat> and then we take the question as what it is. We do not use nugget to contrast the question because they are recent tokens. And we want to decode the answer from the past, uh, from this uh, hybrid combination of a nugget and the token replication. We have two baselines. The first baseline is that we do not use any document. We just input the lemma with the uh, query and uh, ask it to generate an answer. And another baseline is that we do not compress the documents. We use documents as what they are. So we use tokens, which is the uh, original lemma. We fine tune all of them, all three models. So we show that nothing can actually uh, eligibly substitute the token encoder. So in this diagram, we show the logic score of the answer quality. We have three baselines, or we have three models. So we can see that the performance nugget or document level encoding, uh, token level encoding uh, is better than no document uh, baseline, which means document is helpful. And the performance nugget is uh, close to the performance of the token level encoding, which means uh, while being very efficient, it is uh, still very useful. So I, will, I want to take a quick summary of what we have shown yet. So what is the challenges and opportunities for decoder-only language model? So decoder-only language model has multi-layer representation, which brings us challenge that the nugget must be thicker, uh, more space uh, overhead is, is, uh, uh, is brought. 
And the opportunity of that is that we have a layer wise nugget, which has a richer representation from the basic level to the high level. And the, the decoder only language model is left to write. So a, a token only encodes something before that token. So we need special design to in, include the last non nugget tokens. But what opportunity can this feature bring to us? So we want to introduce something we are still working on, the so nugget on the fly. So consider that we have a, a passage like, uh, I think, and we have three uh, uh, stack of representations. We select the last token as nugget. And then we have a, a following text. But remember, the following text will not affect the reputation or the selection of a previous nuggets because it's left to write decoder only language model. So this brings us, us some opportunity. What if we can gradually recycle all the tokens into nuggets instead of the text? And can we fundamentally change the way a lemma decodes the text? So, this is the end of my uh, presentation. I want to take a quick uh, conclusion. So something we are still working on or in the future or where we plan on the future. So Nugget provide a certified minimal information loss with high compression ratio, which can be as high as 5%. And with the further training with contrastive objective, uh, can Nugget make information retrieval more efficient? Like uh, we do not want to use a single vector in encode text, neither did we want to use the all the token reputation? We want to find a balance, but this requires some contrastive learning work. In context learning is constrained by the length of a context because of the quadratic complexity, but we can compress history with nuggets. So can we take a step further? Instead of decoding the tokens, how about that? Let's just decode the nuggets, nugget by nugget, a nugget language model. And this is a certified because uh, you can always decode from nugget. So they are natural language, but not understandable to human beings. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.